folks, I'm Keith Bowen. This is Hard Rock University. As you know, at Montana Bee, we've uh, switched to a leaching system to try and get the gold out of the rock because it's so extremely fine. And uh, everything seems to be working okay. I'm still working on bigger agitation tank and a few other little things. But uh, the one thing we haven't demonstrated the feasibility of yet is the extraction from solution. Putting it into solution is one thing, getting it out of solution is something else. Think of it as like truck, going over a mountain. Going up the hill is one challenge, coming down the hill is a different challenge that uses different systems to make it happen safely. So putting it into solution is one thing, getting it back is another. Um, because of a number of technical reasons and legal reasons, it's simpler to go to a non-toxic leach. And in Montana, we can't even use cyanide, so we use something called Eco Gold X, which is a low toxicity leach. Think like the chemicals underneath your sink or less in terms of toxicity. Now, to get it out of solution, we tried electroplating it out of solution. Didn't work too low a conductivity, too low a concentration, something, I don't know, didn't work. Zinc pre precipitation has other issues that we would prefer to try and avoid, not the least of which it's really hard to get clear solution, which you need to do if you're going to do zinc precipitation. And so the most obvious thing would be either resin absorption or carbon absorption. With the thiol sulfate leach, carbon doesn't work very well. So, uh, for technical reasons, carbon doesn't work well with thiol sulfate leaches. And that means resin, ion exchange resin, is the method of choice. Therefore, we're going to, uh, we, we tried four different ion exchange resins. These are rather inexpensive water treatment resins as opposed to specific resins designed for this spe specific task. We have some inquiries about some other resins that may be even more suitable, but we started with these four. Chris sent me four different uh, resins. So here we have five uh, 500 gram samples of standardized uh, pregnant solution. I'm going to put one gram of resin in each one, four different kinds of resin. And I'm just giving them a short designation as opposed to the long number they have. And then I'll take out a sample after one hour of bottle roll. So let me that's what the resin looks like. that in there. The idea is one hour bottle roll is more contact time than we're ever going to be able to practically use. That should be less resin than would normally work. So we shall see what we shall see. I, I expect to have residual gold in solution in each one of these things, which will give me my loading factor, but we shall see what happens at the end of an hour and then the laboratory test. So there they are, all rolling. I staged them five minutes apart, which will give me time to take it out, get my sample, get the next one, without changing the uh, time that each one had to do its thing. I got about 10 gallons of well-blended uh, pregnant solution. It's all the same grade, has very little suspended solids in it. It's very easy to work with. And uh, with one uh, assay, it's running 30.4 parts per million or 0.89 ounces per ton of solution. So that's a fairly good solution. Now, we did four different resins. I took 500 milliliters of solution and one gram of resin and bottle rolled it for an hour. Doing them kind of sequentially about five minutes apart so that the time difference when I'm sampling is zero. 
And here's how it all turned out. Um, the resin I labeled CR4, which is a cation resin, ended up with a solution strength of 24.9 parts per million. So it only recovered about 18% of the gold out of solution. The resin I labeled MB1 was 11.6 parts per million at the end, or about 62% recovery. The one I labeled AR1 was 8.08 .08 parts per million, or about 73% recovery out of solution after one hour. And AR3 was 2.66 parts per million, which was 91% recovery. So clearly AR3 was the winner. And uh, it loaded in this test to about 0.2 ounces per pound of resin, or about $350 per pound in the resin. Now this resin only costs $20 to $25 per pound, so we can easily ash it uh, at that and still make money. Um, but I'd like to see what exactly the, the maximum feasible loading is, because we might be able to run it several times that. Um, in this particular test, as the gold went into the resin, there was less and less gold into solution in the solution, and so it reaches a point where it just won't drive it into the resin anymore. And this would normally happen well before the resin is completely loaded. So I'm going to start with a test which has about six times the gold per amount of resin. I'm tripling the amount of solution and cutting the resin in half, bottle rolling it, and then taking multiple samples. Now that we have a resin that is a good target, we're going to take multiple samples at 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, like that, all the way up to 32 hours. And then we'll start analyzing them and, and stop spending money on analyzing samples when we decide that we've got the data we need. It's real simple to take samples. And this will give us how fast it goes into the resin at what solution concentrations, or at least approximations of these things. Now, the way you deal with this in a real-life situation is that instead of running all the solution through all the resin, you put the resin in containers and you run it from one container to the next. So the first container it gets to has the highest loaded resin and the highest concentration in solution. The solution coming out of it goes to the next resin which will load to a lower level and like that. Typically something like three to five containers, and then once you've loaded the first container of resin to your target, you take it out of circuit, move everything up one, and put some fresh resin in a, the, another end container, and then get the gold out of the resin. Now what we're planning on doing is probably we're going to try ashing it first. Even right now we've got a concentration where we can ash it, smelt it, we should be able to get gold without too much trouble. We may have to use a collector metal, not sure at this point. We're doing really small tests so it's, you know, when we screw up it's really cheap. But anyhow, that's where we're at right now. Uh, give you the results of the other tests when it happens. It's actually running right now and I should have the results by eh, Thursday hopefully. So. That's our progress report. The resin is doing a good job of getting the gold, at least one of them is, and we're going to see just how good a job it could do. How fast it can absorb how much gold is the next series of tests. So happy prospecting and keep it safe out there.